Hey, brothers and sisters, it's Miss Dana Ashley coming at you with another dream. Wish I could say this dream was awesome and inspiring and uplifting. It is inspiring, but maybe not for the most positive reasons for some of you. So essentially, I wanted to let you know I had a dream about the eclipse today. I actually got up really early this morning and didn't went to bed late the night before, so I took a quick nap today. And I've been in a lot of prayer lately because I, like most of you, um, just feeling a lot about what's coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. North Korea best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. And so I took a quick, I took a quick nap. And in the nap, it was a very quick snippet, but it was very, very vivid and clear. In the dream, we were outside, and I could see the sunlight across a large area. And you know how when you can see sunlight over a large area, you can see when a cloud covers it or what have you. So in the dream, um, it, it was obvious that the sun was being eclipsed and the shadow very quickly moved across the land that I was next to and the sky itself around the sun seemed just supernatural. So what I what made the unusual because I'm sure most of you you'd have to be under a rock to not know there's an eclipse coming right? What was unusual about it is everyone was shocked because the eclipse came early. I know the eclipse is happening on August 21st. Like most of you, you probably already know that uh, eclipses are a sign from God. Now, what do the scriptures have to say about eclipses? In Genesis 1.14, everyone knows God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to divide the day from the night and let them be for what? Signs. Now, Jesus said this, and a lot of Christians may interpret this one scripture. They will isolate this one scripture to say, Jesus will not give a sign. No, that's not what he said. He said that the Pharisees, he called them an evil and adulterous generation, seeks for a sign, meaning they're not seeking for the Messiah. So he said, an evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. So even to the evil generation, he says, I'm still going to give you one sign. It's not saying God doesn't give signs. He says, for the evil, I'll give only one sign. And he said, I'll give you a sign even if you're wicked and dense. Even if you won't believe me, I'll give you one sign. And it's called the sign of Jonah. What would that be? Well, if you ask Christians, they'll only say one thing. So you need to go back into history and think, what was the sign of Jonah? Because Jonah did something that nobody else has ever done. He goes into a city very reluctantly. He's a reluctant prophet. Has there ever been a missionary who hated the people that he was reaching and with a reluctant sermon ends up converting the entire city? That is one of the most outstanding miracles in the entire Bible. That's revival. That's what happened in Nineveh. And a lot of Christians cannot explain that because they ignore what Jesus said. There was a sign given to Nineveh called the sign of Jonah. What was that sign? Take a look at it. Today, Nineveh is called Mosul, so there's Mosul right there. And there was a total solar eclipse that crossed the north of Nineveh on the 15th of June, 763 B.C., during the reign of King Ashurdan III. This was one of the omens which led Nineveh to repent wholesale. Before Jonah arrived, it wasn't because he was such a great preacher. It was because the hearts of the people had been prepared through a series of omens and signs. The greatest of which, the most objective of which, was the solar eclipse passing almost directly overhead their city. Dubbed the Bur Sego Eclipse, it was one of the most famous solar eclipses in ancient history. You may think they're just something to check out while you crack open a beer. But if you look in history, you'll see that the last time we had an eclipse in the United States was 1918, the same year that there was a huge pandemic 
not epidemic, pandemic, very, very bad. 700,000, I think, almost people died from a flu pandemic that year. As well, another uh, very uh, famous or infamous eclipse. It was actually called the World War I eclipse. World War I lasted four years and killed almost 17 million people all across Europe. The very start of that war is where this eclipse began. And the eclipse happened within the first two months of that four-year world war. In the old days, people understood that these were signs of God. This is not something man can manipulate. So it makes sense that it's a message. And uh, in, an, in this case, it's definitely a warning. The reason why it's really interesting for me is because I was already getting the dreams and visions about what's coming to America and now learning about this eclipse, meaning that very thing. It's very difficult not to feel very deeply that this is real. When my dream happened and I saw this eclipse happening and we all knew, wait, it's not the 21st yet. It came early. That says to me that the judgment that is attached to this, the judgment of America, which is what this is about, is coming early. Not later, early. So knowing the September 23rd sign of revelation being just about one month later on another feast day, guys, it's time to wake up. This is no joke. The dreams of nuclear devastation and huge, huge natural disasters like no one can even... Fin we, we, we've never suffered here. I lived in L.A. where there could be 70,000 homeless people on any given night. They are given two meals a day. Now, when those people aren't getting their meals, when you go to the grocery store and there's nothing there because we have no power because an EMT attack hap EMP, sorry, attack happened... Civil War is what they have been reading. It has what they have been showing us. These television shows, I don't even watch them, but I mean, I take note of what they're programming us with, where people are hunting each other and killing each other on purpose. They're pre-programming us to get us all riled up. So that's the very thing we do when we don't have a meal. It's coming and you need to get your heart ready. I feel so passionately. I mean, pe even people that believe in God are just in their happy little bubble. They're not paying attention to the signs. And the people who don't believe are watching the Kardashians and cracking a beer with the eclipse. I mean, there, there are so few people who know what's coming. Wake up. This is not about a dead book. This is about a real live living God who you can turn to and you can ask into your heart and you can say, please help me to know you. It, he's, he can do that. He's God. It's amazing. You should try it. Okay, I'll wrap this up now. Yeah, judgment is coming earlier than we think. And so it's time. It's time to humble yourself and ask for some truly divine guidance. Not your angel guides. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye-bye. The month of Elul on God's calendar is an appointed time. God is God 24-7. Amen. Amen. Amen? But yet, there are scriptures that say, call on the Lord while he is near. In other words, on God's calendar, at his appointed time, there are times on God's appointments that all that God is, his power, his healing, his blessing, his his finances, everything is closer to us than other times of the year. We're right now in the month of Elul, and the month of Elul is the time of blowing the trumpet. We blow the trumpet in Zion, we sound the alarm. And the reason is that we wake up and we, we say, God, am I everything you want me to be? Am I serving you the way you want me to serve you? Am I right in my heart? Am I right with my tithes? Am I right with my offerings? Because where your man's treasure is, there will his heart be also. And so the month of Elul is the month of Teshuvah. The word Teshuvah is the word return. <laughs>